afternoon. It seems odd, but this is actually our first in-person gathering of January, of January 2021, so Happy New Year. It seems like a tired phrase at this point, but Happy New Year, and I'm so glad to see you all here and to welcome you to the, our worship experience today. It truly is a joy to gather in person, even under these circumstances with a little bit of chill in the air, uh, to be together is always a warming and ex exciting opportunity. As you are coming together, if you find yourself getting extremely cold, we do have an extra blanket up here. Terrence Goodwin has one in his lap just waiting for you. Um, so just holler if you need one and we will help you bundle up for the rest of the service. If you have watched our um, our virtual services and you know they are ongoing each week we release them at eight o'clock in the morning at wsmethodist.org and we will continue to do that our next in-person outdoor service is scheduled for january the 24th at four o'clock if you saw this morning service then you know that we did have a positive case of COVID in the soup cellar uh, last week therefore we close the soup cellar and we will reopen tomorrow as all Others have tested negative and we are ready to resume action tomorrow. So we are looking forward to being able to open our doors once again to our, our brothers and sisters who are in need of warm soup and good food. Today we want to share two deaths with you that are of interest to our congregation. First, the death of Alice Brown, one of our longtime members. Alice passed away yesterday at Baptist Hospital. Also, the death of Wiley Alexander, Mike Alexander's brother. He passed away also yesterday. So we want to remember these families as they continue this process of grief and as we continue to share God's love and joy together. I'd like to ask Joe Epting to come forward at this time. Good evening. I love Washington Street. I love the brothers and the sisters in Christ that are my family here. They are interesting, they are loving, they are smart, and they are full of faith. We have teachers and symphony musicians and surgeons. We have former U.S. cabinet members and national and state leaders. We have lawyers. We have retired ministers, we have business leaders. Together, we are so driven, so passionate, so full of love. We are also what my elementary school music teacher referred to as a handful. Miss Beamer was talking about me when she said that, but we are all a handful. I've often wondered what it's like to be the shepherd of this flock. Since June of 2016, that shepherd has been Reverend Patricia Parrish. She's been a wonderful friend to me and someone who's always had time for afternoon coffee and conversation. But now she is moving to a new role in the church. She's retiring. And that'll be effective in June of this year. You know, the Lord always has an opportunity and a plan in store for us and for Gary and the Reverend Parish. We know it will include two things. It'll include some rest up at Lake Junaluska where they have a home. And it'll include their first grandchild in July, a boy, that they'll get to spoil. I want to thank Reverend Parrish for a time here together with us. We've had so many challenges as a church as, as a church family and you know during all those a pandemic things that were out of our control and in the hands of other people that we had to make decisions on through all that she had the unique ability to out of that noise make individuals feel seen feel heard, and feel loved. I'll miss our frequent conversations, but I want you to know I'm excited 
to see what the next chapter for her and Gary hold. And we thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure that Joe knows how often those afternoon coffees um, were to keep me sane in the middle of the storm. <laughs> uh, he didn't want to tell y'all that. And I am really and truthfully looking forward to retirement, but I will surely miss each and every one of you. Uh, you're a warm, loving, and generous people. And sometimes I've observed over the years that when congregations are going through clergy leadership changes, that they often think that's when they're supposed to stop and pause and wait. But I want to tell you that the most important thing for us to do is to keep moving forward and to build bridges from what has been in our last four and a half, almost five years now, uh, to the new future. And I want to be a part of helping you build bridges, setting up goals and visions for what will be for you as you move forward in 2021 and beyond. There is nothing but good things ahead for this congregation as you navigate what the world will be like for us in the next generation. I thank you for allowing me to come and be your shepherd, for welcoming me with open arms, even though some of you weren't sure about having um, a woman with a ponytail in the pulpit. That's what somebody said early on. <laughs> so it, it's been a joyous adventure and such a wonderful, wonderful family here of faith. And I, I have enjoyed my time here with you. Today, I wanted also to do um, something that I very rarely do. And that is to simply say that we have had an unfortunate experience as people of the United States of America this week. I don't think any one of us could have anticipated what has taken place in our nation's capital. I went in to film on Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock knowing that the uh, Congress had gone into recession to vote on the Arizona objection. And when I got in my car to go home, I was absolutely astounded, as I'm sure each and every one of you were. It's only appropriate for us now to offer prayer to God for the healing of our country and for us to do so together as God's people. Let us pray. Oh God, you know the trouble we have seen in this week and the fear that has crowded our hopes for the future of our country. Enable us to trust in you as we pray for the health of our nation. Guide our Congress as they seek to lead us through this difficult time. Give strength to those who will lead us through this crisis and into our future. Grant us the ability to disagree with one another in matters of public discourse, yet to be united as we seek the good for all Americans. Forgive us for dangerous silences. Enable us to speak boldly for truth, justice, equity, and for your way of righteousness. Enable us to live as citizens of your reign even as we practice good citizenship as the people of the United States of America. In your holy name we pray, amen. And now let us worship the Lord. If you would join me in the call to worship found printed in your worship guide. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, 
Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together. Loving God, we thank you that you are with us in the chaos. You give us light and order and show us the truth. When we don't know where to turn, we can follow your light. Lord, guide us toward peace and justice. Fill us with your spirit that we may be a beacon of light to a dark, unsettled, hurting world. Embolden us to follow the way of Jesus and all that we say and do. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Our lesson today comes from <clears throat> the first chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Never let it be said that God does not have a sense of humor. Um, because if you noticed my sermon title, it's God in the Midst of Chaos. And we have been in chaos getting prepared for this today um, because we didn't have outdoor power. So um, sometimes you're preaching to yourself. Um, in the beginning, there was chaos until God created order out of it. Chaos, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is one, a state of utter confusion, or two, a state of things in which chance is supreme, especially the confused, unorganized state of primordial matter before the creation of distinct forms. So according to the dictionary, there was chaos in the beginning of Genesis because primordial, primordial matter was unorganized. It was formless and empty until God started speaking. Yet even in this initial chaos, God's spirit was present, hovering over the water. Then with just God's voice, light came into being and was separated from the darkness so God was able to make order out of that initial chaos by speaking day and night into existence and creating not just order, but time itself. So in these five verses at the beginning of the Hebrew scriptures, the beginning of our Bible, we find out a lot about God. We find out that God is both above and in the chaos. God is a creator, not a destroyer. God deliberately created the world. It didn't just happen by accident. God had a plan. God is a communicator. God could have thought the world into existence, but God chose to speak, to give us some insight into the divine. We found out that God is all powerful. The Lord can bring order out of chaos, create light, separate day from night, and start time. And with the establishment of the cycle of light and darkness, God shows us that each day is a new creation and a fresh start. Now this unparalleled power and might of God can be intimidating and scary if we don't know the rest of the story. But thankfully we do. We know from subsequent Hebrew scriptures that God created humanity for relationship, for relationship with the divine and with each other, and that God wants humanity to flourish. We also know through the Gospels that God loves us so much that the divine became incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ to live among us, experience all the things we do, and show us what God wants for us and for the world. God wants us to love each other and order our world so that all people thrive. Through the life of Jesus Christ, we got a taste of God's vision for the world, a place where infirmities are healed, the outcast are included, and marginalized people are prioritized. It's a wonderful picture that won't be complete until the end of time, but it's what God wants us to strive for. Unfortunately, God creating order out of chaos in the beginning did not abolish chaos for all time, a fact that we are painfully aware of. As we well know, we live in a very chaotic world. Disorder, confusion, and uncertainty seem to be swirling around us all the time, and that has been made painfully clear 
in this past week. We've had chaos caused by the rampant spread of the coronavirus with the resulting sickness and death. Currently, hospitals around the country are at or nearing capacity and getting close to the point where they will have to turn sick people away because they don't have the resources to help them. Our medical professionals are stretched to their limit. And most of us personally know someone who either has or has had the coronavirus. All this fear and uncertainty breed chaos. On Wednesday, we had chaos in Washington, D.C. as insurrectionists stormed the Capitol and tried to stage a coup to overturn the results of our presidential election. We watched stunned as the very foundations of our democracy were attacked and the seat of our government was overrun and vandalized. Death and injury resulted. This refusal to accept defeat is causing chaos in our country. All this chaos is overwhelming. I know I've been overwhelmed this week. It can feel like our world is spinning out of control and we're at the mercy of things much greater than we are. But we're not. God is with us in the chaos. Just like God created order out of the formless void at the dawn of time, God can bring order out of our chaos. And even if order is not achieved, God is with us in it. So even in the chaos, we can find solace knowing that God is with us, offering us divine peace and comfort and that God is greater than any chaos we might encounter. Knowing that God is with us in the chaos is how Horatio Spafford could write the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. And we're gonna sing a little bit of that in just a couple of minutes. He wrote that hymn, the words to that hymn, after he had lost a fortune in the Chicago fire of 1871, he had had a son die of scarlet fever, and he had had his four daughters drown in a shipwreck. But he could still find God in the midst of his personal chaos and knew that God was with him. Sometimes all we can do is try to survive, just like Horatio, and God will be with us as we do. However, much of the time, God wants us to act to control the chaos. Since the creation of humanity, God has chosen to work through people to do God's will in the world. So instead of God speaking to the chaos to bring order like God did in the beginning, God now speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. This Spirit lives in us and guides and empowers us to act as God's hands and feet in the world, to move our world to more closely align with God's plan for it with the way God wants it. This spirit emboldens us to do things that honor God and achieve order among chaos, amidst the chaos. When we follow God's lead, we will ground our lives in love and work to see justice prevail and to establish peace, a peace that means so much more than just the absence of conflict and dissension but one where all people are able to flourish. When we cling to God in the midst of our chaos and lean on God for guidance and strength, God will empower us to bring order out of the chaos. 
Just like our Congress people on Wednesday did not allow the, the chaos that was going on in our nation's capital to keep them from fulfilling their constitutional duty to certify the electoral, electoral votes and make sure that we have a new president, God will give us the strength and ability to battle and conquer the chaos in our lives, whether it's financial crisis, relational crisis, or medical crisis. Sometimes, though, chaos can't be ordered. There are times, like with a terminal illness, when order will not be restored on earth. Even then, we can still cling to God and find God's peace, the peace that passes all understanding, because we know that we are not alone. God is with us, accompanying us and giving us the ability to withstand whatever the trial, whatever the chaos it is that we're going through. Order will come eventually to our lives, to our nation, and to this world. But it will take time and work. And that is what God calls us to do. To let the Holy Spirit guide us as we work for a world that, is more, that more closely aligns with God's vision. I pray that all this chaos will cease and soon. But whether order is restored soon or not until the end of time, I know that God is with us, each of us, as we seek to follow the way of Jesus by loving God and others and striving for peace and justice in our world. Thanks be to God. Thank you for the good word from the preacher and the good word from the hymn writer. Let us pray together. O oh God, as we gather today and we gaze upon one another's faces, we see within those brows the challenges of isolation and distance the heartbreak of grief, the feelings of loss, and the true sense 
of fear and suffering in the midst of the chaos that we have experienced in recent weeks and months. And yet, Lord, when we gather, we know. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are the God who has always come to us, always stood beside us, always lifted us up and carried us through the most difficult times. And therefore we come to speak a word of thanks, to say we are so thankful that you love us, that you care for us, that in your wisdom you have indeed created a path for us to always be with you. As we continue into this time of worship and into this period when we have certain fears and certain anxieties, we pray that you would grant us your comfort and your peace. Help us to know that your strength and your power are not distant from us, but are within us and among us. Bind us to one another and fill our hearts with hope as we continue to be your people. And in this place, a church with heart in the heart of the city. And now, God, we ask that you would hear as we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now go out into this chaotic world knowing that the God who created the universe goes with you to strengthen you and empower you to survive the chaos and master it. Amen and amen.